In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create a quiz app with a connected data source. We've put together a simple design that we'll explain briefly, and then we'll build out the blocks together from scratch. We've got a simple two-screen project. The first screen is the quiz itself. There are a few descriptor labels, a placeholder label where the question will populate, and buttons for each of the answer options. The quiz's questions and answers live here in a spreadsheet. We have a column dedicated to the question, each answer option, and the correct answer. Our data source has been connected to our project here in the data sources panel. We've opted for Google Sheets, but you can choose another data source option if you prefer. The second screen is the end screen that displays the user's score upon completion of the quiz. Here we have a couple of descriptor labels, a placeholder label to populate the user's score, and a button to take the quiz again. Okay, now that we understand the app's design, let's build out the blocks. We'll start with the quiz screen where we'll initialize two app variables. A variable is a placeholder for something within the app that will change and we want to keep track of. For this project, that's the question number and the user's score. We'll initialize the variables for where we want them to begin when the screen opens. For question number, we'll initialize it to one, and for score, we'll initialize it to zero. We've connected our project to our data source, but we need to tell the app where to pull the question and answer options from. Rather than build out blocks for each question, we'll create a function where we can build out the blocks once and then call the function each time we need to load a new question. The components we need to populate for each question in the quiz are the question and the answer options. Click the question label in the component tree and drag the set labels text to block and drop it within the function. We want to set the question labels text to the question from the connected data source. So we'll click data sources, drag the get value from block and connect it. Let's ensure the fields are correct. The data source and sheet are correct, but it's not the category column we want, it's the question column. We need to be even more specific and indicate which row we want the question from. Of course, this will change as the user progresses through the quiz. So we'll use the question number variable we initialized earlier to indicate which row we want the data from. Now let's move on to populating each of the buttons with the corresponding answer option. Copy and paste the set labels text to block. Use the drop down menu to change it to button option one and change the column header to answer option one. Repeat for the remaining three buttons. Great. Now when we call this function, it will populate the text of each of these components according to which question number the user is on. Next, let's create a function to highlight the correct answer. Here in our data source, there's a correct answer column containing the answer option number associated with the correct answer for each question. Grab an if do block from the control drawer and drop it within the function. From the logic drawer, drag an equals equation block and drop it next to if. Drag the standalone digit block from the math drawer, drop it in the first part of the equation, and change its value to 1. Copy and paste a data source, get value from block, and drop it in the second half of the equation. Select the correct answer column header. Click the option one button in the component tree, drag the set button's background color to block, drop it next to do, and select green. Let's translate this. If one is equal to the value in the correct answer column of the current question numbers row, therefore option one is the correct answer. Set button option one's background color to green. We need to duplicate this for each of the other buttons. Copy and paste the if block, change the one to a two, and button option one to button option two. Repeat for buttons three and four. Great, this function will highlight the correct answer in green. Let's create a similar function to highlight the wrong answers in red. Copy and paste the highlight correct answer function and rename it. For each answer option, we'll change the logic block from equals to does not equal and the colors from green to red. For this function, if the number indicated is not equal to the value in the correct answer column of the current question numbers row, therefore the option number is not the correct answer, we'll set the button's background color to red. Next, let's build a function to reset each of the button's colors to white in advance of the next question loading. Now let's pull some of these functions together to build out the functionality for after the user answers a question. The first thing we want the app to do is highlight the correct answer and highlight the wrong answers. So we'll drag those function blocks into our after the user answers function. Then we'll have the app wait two seconds before resetting the button colors. Click control and drag an if do else block into the function. Click logic, drag an equals to equation block and connect it to if. After the user answers, if the question number is equal to the number of rows in the data source, meaning that they've just completed the final question, we'll navigate them to the end screen. If not, we'll increase the app variable question number by one and update the quiz for the next question. The last thing we need to do on this screen is tell the app how to behave when a button is clicked. Copy and paste an if block combination from the highlight correct answer function and nest it within the when button click block. Ensure that the number matches the button option number, delete the set background color block, and replace it with a change variable score by one block. Lastly, we'll call the after the user answers function. 
which, remember, highlights the buttons, resets them, and then takes the user to the end screen if that was the last question, or presents the next question. Duplicate the When Button Click block for each of the buttons, ensuring the number and button option number match for each. That's everything we need for this screen. Let's head over to the end screen, where the user will be taken when they've completed the final question in the quiz. When the screen opens, we want to display the user's score in the score label, which we've been calculating using the app variable score. Lastly on this screen, when a user clicks the play again button, we want to reset the score variable to zero and the question number variable to one and navigate the user back to the quiz screen. Let's test it with Thunkable Live. When the user selects an answer, the options highlight just like we set them up to, then advances the user to the next question. And we'll cut to the end to check out the end screen. And there you have it. Together, we created a quiz app that's powered by a connected data source. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and make sure to subscribe to our channel for more great content. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, innovation should have no limits.